so uh, the session is focused more upon process technology innovations for the refining sector. And as was rightly mentioned, one of the main trends we are seeing across the refining industry, and this is happening all across the globe, is looking more into sustainable refining or green refining. And people are trying to leverage upon alternative feedstocks as opposed to conventional fossil-based feedstocks to produce so-called uh, synthetic uh, or let's say sustainable or green uh, feedstock which can be put into a refinery or even cracker assets. And one of the feedstocks which is being actively, actively investigated are the pyrolysis oils which are produced from different plastics. And this is where the chemical recycling of plastics comes into the picture. And that's, a, and that's the main topic of my presentation. I know my presentation is right after the lunch session, so hopefully it can be a replacement for the coffee, but uh, and, uh, let's see how it goes about. So the presentation has been structured to introduce Sajar, followed by why we are seeing a main trend in the chemical recycling of plastics. And lastly, we will focus upon our portfolio in this particular set. Salzer Chemtech is one of the divisions of Salzer. It has a very diverse footprint, starting from equipment and services and all the way to technology and licensing. We cater to different market segments like chemicals, renewables, gas and refining, and water. Now, among the renewables, we have different technologies, you know, like in the field of bioplastics, like PLA, renewable diesel, which has gained quite a bit of strong momentum in US as well as in, in Europe. And last but not the least, the plastic recycling, which is the focus of today's presentation. Now, why has plastic recycling gained so much mainstream attention? If you look at this infographic, one can see that approximately 330 million tons per annum of virgin plastics are produced every year, out of which a humongous amount of 260 million tons per annum of waste plastics are generated. Now, these waste plastics, they undergo different routes. 25% are incinerated, and you can imagine that leads to greenhouse gas emissions. 40% go to landfills, which are an environmental hazard on their own accord. And approximately 20% are beyond any human control. I mean, these are plastic which we see scattered across land masses or floating on oceans. If you look at the recycling rates, approximately 16% are recycling and mechanical recycling dominates the mix by approximately 12%. And chemical recycling, which is the focus of today's presentation, represents a minuscule less than 1% of the overall recycling rate. And this is where we personally believe at Southern a significant amount of growth would be, would be expected. Why? This is highlighted in this particular slide. So if you, if you look at the infographic on the left-hand side, the demand for virgin plastics is expected to grow at a healthy CAGR for at least the next three decades. This is predominantly because, uh, because of the expected population increase as well as a middle-class upliftment. Now, what does that mean in terms of recycling rates across different categories? Mechanical recycling will continue to dominate, but the two sections which are highlighted in the dotted, uh, dotted red box, and this is what chemical recycling represents, which are recycled monomers and the feedstock produced from pyrolysis, these will see significant growth. And this is where you know our presentation is, uh, is focused now, why do we believe that chemical recycling or this particular segment will see an exponential growth? It's for the very simple reason that when you're trying to chemically recycling waste plastics, because you're breaking down, breaking them down into building in the building blocks, which is which are the respective molecules, you can actually create uh, new plastics which par which you know, parallel the properties of the virgin plastic. This is a limitation which, to a certain extent, mechanical recycling suffers from. The plastics in mechanical recycling after a certain cycle do not retain the same properties as the virgin plastic. And that's why we believe chemical recycling which will see significant growth. Now, before I deep, do a deep dive into our portfolio in this particular segment, we, are, we have offerings on, in almost all of the different pla 
plastic strategy. Predominantly, we are, we are positioned more on the back end where, uh, when it comes to separation or the upgradation of the, of the feedstocks which are produced during the depolymerization process. We are, not, we are not positioned in the depolymerization or the pyrolysis se section, so to speak. We have offerings in the, in the PET area, polyamide, polymers, uh, clothes like natural fibers, polystyrene, PMMA, and last but not the least, the mixed plastic. This is the largest category uh, by far for the, for, for the very obvious reason. Now, chemical recycling of PET, now before I talk a little bit of, about our offering in this space, it's, it's an interesting trivia that India has actually one of the highest PET recycling rates. And uh, th that is because of different reasons. Now, our offering with regards to PET chemical recycling, as explained earlier, is on the back end, where after depolymerization, and that depolymerization can be through different routes, like methanolysis, hydrolysis, or glycolysis, when you break the PET into the respective monomers, those monomers still need to be upgraded to higher purity. And that is where we come into the picture with a strong forte in distillation, distillation, and other technology. We have a suite of hybrid processes to accomplish, to, to accomplish this. Chemi chemical recycling of polyamide 6. Now, polyamide 6 is a widely used plastic for di in different applications, like especially one of them is, autom is automotive. Now, as mentioned earlier, we are not positioned in the depolymerized section, but on the back end, we have a hybrid scheme which consists of distillation followed by crystallization. And we are able to produce the highest purity caprolactam, which is a starting monomer for, uh, for this polyamide uh, plastic. One of the key advantages of using this hybrid scheme is that whatever close boiling or co-boiling impurities that cannot be removed by distillation are taken care of in, in that crystallization process. And one uh, thing needs to be taken into consideration that when I talk about crystallization over here, I'm not referring to uh, crystallizers like centrifuges or other complex kind of equipment. These are simple melt kind of crystallizers, uh, of melt kind of crystallizers, like falling film or static crystallizers. Solvent-based recycling. Now, this is not exactly chemical recycling, but this, in a way, uh, also has competed strongly with uh, with chemical recycling. Over here, as one expects, you use a solvent to dissolve the waste plastics along with other impurities, and then you try to separate out <coughs> the, the plastic from the solvent. Over here within Sulzer, we have a unique DEVO technology or devolatilization technology, which helps to separate the polymer from the solvent mixture. And one of the key advantages of using this technology is it is able to work across a broad viscosity range. Now, apart from the solvent and polymer separation, the solvent also needs to be reused and recovered in the process. So over here, we have solutions in evaporations, distillation, or liquid-liquid extraction. When it comes to textile uh, recycling, we have a very strong interest in that. Salga is a major shareholder in a UK-based startup called One Again, wherein we are involved in helping to scale up their process of recycling end-of-life end of uh, textiles or clothes. Polystyrene recycling. Now, as, as probably all of you are aware that when it comes to styrene, in, I mean, India has, indigenously, India does not have a styrene production, and there are different, and this is one way of, by polystyrene re chemical recycling that not only you can deal with the waste polystyrene, but also you can boost in a, you know, in a domestic polystyrene, domestic styrene production. Now, of course, I mean, the quantity of waste polystyrene available across the country is probably not sufficient enough to meet the demands of uh, the domestic se sector, but still, it's one of the routes which can be explored. Now, when it comes to polystyrene chemical recycling, if you look at the, if you look at the value chain, as one can imagine, the waste polystyrene needs to be sorted from a mixed plastic, and then it undergoes a depolymerization process, which is highlighted in the, in the, in the green box. This depolymerization process can be thermal or catalytic pyrolysis. And in one particular instance, we have seen a microwave uh, pyrolysis approach. Now, 
after the depolymerization process, you produce a crude styrene oil. Now, from this crude styrene oil, you need to have a specific scheme for purification so that you can produce a styrene monomer, which meets all ASTM specifications. And we developed a specific scheme for this particular application for, the, for predominantly two main reasons. Number one, even if you deploy the, the state-of-the-art sorting method, that waste polystyrene will contain small fractions of other plastics. Those plastics can lead to impurities in that crude styrene oil in the form of nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine, or and, and oxygen. And these impurities cannot be removed by conventional distillation. The other important reason is, during a deep elimination process, you can actually produce impurities like orthoxylene or phenylacetylene, which co-boil with styrene and cannot be removed by conventional distillation. So we, within Selzer Chemtech, developed a scheme specifically for this purification. And this is what is highlighted by that, <coughs> by that dotted blue box. Again, it's a hybrid scheme, which consists of distillation, followed by crystallization. What we do in the distillation process over here is that we don't go to very high purities of styrene. I mean, and of course, the purity of styrene gets limited by the close boiling or the co-boiling impurities that have come from the upstream process. We, we, on the other hand, we produce an, an impure cut, and we go at the back end to a crystallization block, which once again are simple crystallizers in the form of melt crystallizers, like falling film or static. And in this crystallization block, the elegance is that it removes all closed boiling and co-boiling impurities, which can render the styrene uh, not suitable for ASTM specification. And we have demonstrated by real-life uh, pilot trials that we have been able to produce not only ASTM grade styrene, but ultra high purity styrene, which exceeds all required specifications. This styrene can be used to produce the highest grade of polystyrene like SSPR or, or other forms of uh, polystyrene. So this is one way uh, the styrene monomer can be, uh, can be generated from a, from a waste source like polystyrene. Now, last but not the least, the mixed plastics category. And in a way, the tires also come into this category when the tires reach their end of life. And this is where, where we are seeing quite a bit of momentum, both on the petrochemical as well as the refining sector all across the world to utilize the pyrolysis oils which are produced from mixed plastics. On the refining side, we are seeing quite a bit of interest in using these pyrolysis oils and co-feeding them in, in bottom of barrel units or even units like FCC. Uh, even more stronger is the trend we are seeing in the market, especially in, Euro in, uh, in Europe, is using these pyrolysis oils and feeding them into naphtha crackers for a very simple reason, that in the naphtha crackers, you once again generate olefins, the light olefins, like ethylene and propylene, which can be used to produce plastics once again. So it kind of closes the loop or brings circularity. Now, what are our offerings in this space? Again, we are not positioned in the pyrolysis space, but downstream of pyrolysis, we offer all the all the main uh, value steps. So after the pyrolysis reactor, there is a requirement for a quench section. The reactor vapors need to be cooled down quite fast, otherwise you have falling or polymerization problem. So we can offer custom-made designs for that particular quench section, not only from an engineering standpoint, but also we can deliver skits. Now, after the quench, these pyrolysis oil contains certain impurities which need to be removed before you can valorize them in downstream steps. Now, these impurities consist of total nitrogen, chlorine, sulfur species, oxygenates, high amount of polyphenols. And, and you can imagine a lot of these impurities get generated from the waste source, which are the mixed plastics. Now, over here, we have, as opposed to a conventional trickle bed hydrofeeding, we have our own proprietary liquid recycle based technology called Max Flux, which brings in approximately 30 to 40 percent capex as well as opaque savings as compared to the conventional trickle bed system. Now, why are these savings are of importance, especially in plastic recycling? As one can imagine, I mean, these plastics pyrolysis unit or recycling units are not of the same scale as you see the refinery or the petrochemical uh, throughputs. These are much smaller units. So economy of scale is really of importance over here. The capex savings really translate to increasing the viability of the project. 
Now, after hydrotreating, one needs to uh, distill these pyrolysis oil into different fractions so that they can be fed into different units downstream, either on the refinery end or, or on the petrochemical tracker. Now, over here, uh, within Salgar Chemtech, we are one of the world leaders when it comes to separation or distillation process. And we have actually dealt with these pyrolysis oils and supplied a distillation skit for a European uh, plastic pyrolysis uh, company called Quantafu. That skid was put into operation in quarter one of, or, or uh, basically quarter four of last year. Now after fractionation, depending upon what kind of mixed plastics were put, there can be certain fractions which need to be upgraded for further downstream valorization. One particular instance which I would like to point out is, there is this company called Encina, which are involved in catalytic pyrolysis. And because they are, used, they are doing catalytic pyrolysis, they have a high amount of aromatics in these plastic pyrolysis oils. And we, sup uh, we supplied a hydro treating followed by an aromatic extraction solution to extract those high, high amount of aromatics from, the, from those mixed plastics. Similarly, uh, the heavy end of these, uh, of these pyrolysis oil, they contain quite a bit of waxes. And they are of, of high demand in the candle wax market. So within Salzer Chemtech, we have our own unique wax deoiling technology, which is solvent-free based. So, depending upon the nature of these, the nature of the molecules present in these pyrolysis oils, we have different technologies in our armor to help the clients extract valuable molecules out of them. And this helps not not only in extracting the molecules but also in purifying these oils. And this helps the refiners as well as the petrochemical, petrochemical operators to use these pyrolysis oils in their downstream units. And this, you know, this in a way, promotes the sustainability or the decarbonization effort which these particular clients want to undertake. Now summarizing my presentation, plastics recycling is no longer a fashion, is no longer a fashion. We are seeing a strong trend because of different reasons to increase the plastic recycling rate all across the globe. Uh, within uh, the different categories of plastic recycling, we believe chemical recycling will, have, will uh, see significant growth as opposed to mechanical recycling for the very simple reason that you are able to break the, the waste plastics into building blocks which can be used to make the same, uh, which can be used to make the plastics which rival the properties of virgin plastic. Having said that, Chemical recycling will play a complementary role. Mechanical recycling, because of its existing infrastructure and certain benefits it brings to the table, it will continue, it will continue to dominate the mix, the, the recycling. We can help the clients when it uh, comes to plastic chemical recycling, when it comes on the separation and the upgradation of these pyrolysis soils before they are fed into the downstream refinery or the petrochemical unit. And we can handle different kind of oils coming from different plastic categories. With that, I conclude my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.